Tone mapping is a tool that is mostly used with HDR images. An HDR image is an image created through a process in which multiple images with different exposures are combined to increase the overall dynamic range of the final image. In Affinity Photo you can use the new HDR merge option from the file menu. This will allow you to select multiple images and as you see there is even an option to tone map the HDR image which will open up the tone mapping persona after the merge. So what is tone mapping? In a very simple way it is the process of reducing the tonal values so that an HDR image will look good on digital screens. Because the HDR image has a high tonal range most screens cannot show the variations in the tones. Let me try to explain with this image. This is an HDR image. If you look at the info panel, notice that this is an RGB 32 bits file. Here I have a normal image in RGB 8. They look very similar, at least on my screen, and probably on most screens, as most screens have no HDR range. Even though they look the same, the HDR version has much more information. A quick and easy way to show this is by applying an exposure adjustment. If I apply the same exposure to both of them, notice how the HDR version did a better job. So this is where tone mapping comes into place. By using some smart algorithms based on spatial characteristics, details are extracted and tones are adjusted to the visible range allowed by digital screens, which in most cases gives a much better looking image with more contrast and detail. As you see, in the tone mapping persona right now, the dark flat image we had can be transformed in many ways and the tone mapping persona has a great set of presets you can experiment with. The tone mapping persona also allows you to apply overlays or in other words dedicated areas where the adjustments will be applied to, very similar to masking. In the overlay panel you can add brushed or gradient overlays but you can also use the tools on the left of the screen. This will allow you to apply adjustments to the selected area. For example, I can change the exposure and white balance to make it look even colder outside. Each overlay has a visibility option, which allows you to hide and show the effect applied on the overlay. But here is a tricky setting. Apply to original. Normally, each overlay works on top of each other. Well, in this case, below each other. No idea why Serif is using a different ordering here. I would expect to use the same logic as layers, but anyway. When you turn on the apply to original, the effect will be applied to the original image and painted on top of the current adjustments. Let me demonstrate by applying the black and white preset first and then create an overlay and adjust the black point in the overlay. Now, if I select apply to original, the effect is not cumulated on top of the current black and white image, but is directly applied on the original with color and added on top of the current image. This is why the area of the overlay has color again. Hope this makes sense. Also, keep in mind that the sections main and detail refinement are only available on the master overlay or on overlays which apply to the original. Enough theory and time for some fun. Even though tone mapping is intended for HDR images, we can also use it in normal JPEG images for creative use. The big disadvantages of tone mapping persona are that it will require a pixel layer and is destructive. As I am not a big fan of working in a destructive way, I don't use it that much. Nevertheless, it is a handy tool to get quick and interesting results. One good use case is enhancing the sky and the clouds. Let's take a look at this example. The sky is quite bright and a lot of details are lost in the clouds. 
I can duplicate the layer and rasterize it, so it becomes a pixel layer. With the pixel layer selected, I can now switch over to the tone mapping persona. By default, it will apply the natural preset, which works very well for HDR images, but for non-HDR images, this will probably be too strong. For this reason, I have created a non-preset, in which everything is turned off. When I apply it, we get our original image back. Using the local contrast and with a little bit of tone compression, I restore some of the details back in the clouds and make them a bit less white. I'm focusing only on the sky. I could use an overlay which would affect only the sky, but because of the destructive nature of the tone mapping persona, I will apply a mask after the tone mapping. This will allow me to modify the area of the changes when needed. This looks about right. Let's apply it for now. And as I mentioned, let's continue by adding an empty mask to this layer. Now, with a white brush on the mask, I can paint back in the sky details. This also affected the colors a bit. So let me change the blend mode to luminosity. That looks much better. The before and the after. A much more interesting end result. Here is another trick you can apply using tone mapping. I will duplicate the original, move it to the top of the layer and rasterize again. Let's open up the tone mapping again for this new layer. As before, I will initially turn off all the adjustments by applying the non-preset I have created. By the way, you can create this yourself very easily by turning off all the adjustments and then use the Add Preset menu in the Preset panel. I will now max out the tone compression and the local contrast. Next, in the Exposure section, I'm going to set all the sliders to their minimum value and as a final step, I'm going to modify the curves. I will flatten the image by increasing the shadow point with a quarter, followed by decreasing the highlight point with a quarter. This will create a grey looking image, but it is exactly what I need. Let's apply the stone map and now we are back in our photo persona. I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to linear light. Awesome! We added a very nice contrast to our image and if needed we can adjust the fill or the opacity. Let me disable this layer and show you a better way of applying the same method, where you have a little bit more control. The tone mapping persona always shows the composition you're working on and not the selected layer. So I can duplicate the original again, rasterize it and move it to the top. But before moving on to the tone mapping persona, I can set the blend mode to linear light. If I open the tone mapping persona now, notice that the applied blend mode is still being applied. Let me repeat the same steps as before and as I apply them you can directly see the result without leaving the tone mapping persona. Pretty cool. This way I can better fine tune the effect for this image. For example, I can adjust the curves to make the final effect stronger, or add a tint of color by changing the white balance. Pretty awesome! Here is another image where I will apply the same steps. First, focusing on the sky. Once I'm happy with the sky, I will apply the tone mapping and then apply a mask so I can paint the changes only on the sky and the mountain rocks. Next, a copy of the original again, but this time in linear light blend mode and using the same trick of maxing the main sliders and minimizing the exposures combined with a flattened curve. Awesome! As a final touch, to dim the effects, we can change the blend ranges of both of these layers. Not bad at all. Keep in mind, I am over exaggerating a bit for demonstration purposes, so the changes are clearly visible. Depending on what you're aiming for, you can fine tune the strength of these steps for your own needs. The tone mapping has a lot of presets which you should definitely experiment with. 
Some are really extreme and some are just crazy. But with a little bit of imagination and blending, you can create interesting compositions, just as I'm doing for this image right now. I hope you liked this video and found it interesting. Thank you very much for watching and until the next video.